Hello, everybody. Hey, right, the Beanie Man's Game Room Services. Today, we are going to be working on a Pro A Olhausen. Um, looks like a Santa Ana. Probably a ran head leg, but we can't tell right now because we have uh, blazing boxes. Um, but right now, we're going to be grabbing the tools out of the van and setting up our little shop. We will be refelting this pool table in the color black. This is Championship uh, Titanium, or uh, Invitational Cloth. So definitely a decent basic grade material that almost everyone uses anyways. So you can get the Mercury one and all, that, all the different levels, but let's go for the uh, Invitational, it's always better quality. So right now we're going to be laying out a blanket because we got nice floors and uh, definitely don't want to uh, mar or scratch or any floors or anything. If you ever lift up a toolbox, uh, make sure you don't put it up against someone's wall because that's never nice to do. It's kind of rude. But definitely one, what we usually do is get the tools in, get everything set up. I'll grab those trash boxes. Get everything set up and uh, start bringing stuff in, staging. So as we go through the process, I'll be explaining how to get your table set up. I've had people in the past say, hey, you know, that video was about as useless as the chocolate fire guard and stuff like that. So this is the video we're going to be using to uh, really get up to park. Actually, we open that one all the way in the middle. And so here we got some Olhausen pockets. These are leather pockets. Definitely a, oops. Uh, definitely a uh, good table, good company to buy a pool table. Uh, from good manufacturer because Olhausen is definitely the best in billiards and they have the uh, best quality. I'm looking at this table right now. Looks like it has Italian slate, the dark gray slate uh, kind of signifies it. Also, it has uh, it has uh, the Lini uh, logo on it and it's uh, original Italian slate. Uh, it's uh, Gabriano and Cuano, Cuino. Those are the, uh, the makers and that's Pro 8. That's a little bit bigger than an eight foot. So definitely gotta be happy. And then this is, it had upgraded cloth on it before, but we're just gonna put basic material because uh, uh, for this uh, job in particular, we're just staging the pool table so they can sell the house. Put these rails on the blanket over here. So we gotta get everything into the room. Where we're going. That's where we're at right now. These are four legs. And now we're gonna grab the frame. And we're running inside. Always nice to lose the table. Two people just so you don't hurt yourself.
it upside down. Upside down. Mahogany finish, a TM. It means traditional mahogany, naturally. Um, we see how they have a rounded edge in here. Great quality. Uh, we're about to see the legs. It's probably a ram head leg, like I said. Let's see how close I am on that. Nope, it's a veil. This is a veil. This is a, kind of like what you would see on a, a, Virgin, a, a Virginian table. Um, you got a little nice design to it. Use the ball box lid to keep your hardware. It just works, you know? Or the washers are gonna have fatter holes in them, and those are to accommodate the leg bolt. I'll show you the leg bolt here in a second. Once you get all four of those installed all the way around, you can position them and tighten them with the 9 16 This one's a 9 16 because it's old house and the rail bolts are half inch. So get a few tools to get started. Um, there will be some grouting and stuff later on that you probably don't just have on hand, but you're gonna do a lot. Two people to flip, and then when you lift it, you just want to make sure that the legs don't touch the ground. Let's go center in the room. Lift your room. Okay. So once we get the table up on its legs, now we can center in the room. That's pretty easy going. Uh, that will take. Measuring tape for sure. So definitely. 
definitely have a method to it because part of it. Now we could do some leveling, but right now I'm gonna do the refill, so I kind of just want to like fast pace it a little bit. Oh yeah, pull those nails out. They put some nails in there. They uh, put that plastic on. There's some all around it. You'll see. They just kind of hammered a nail. Out. So basically, what I'll, I'll level it instead of just uh, getting straight to the refill. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the level on the frame. And to do that, we're gonna make sure that we uh, check side to side on these legs right here from leg to leg. It's a little low right there towards the camera. And then we check one width right here, a little low this way. And then we check the length right here, and it's perfect. So, when you're on top of we like to use rubber, rubber shims. So we'll grab the rubber shims and place them under the legs. Don't have rubber shims, get coasters and playing cards and use those if you need to. Other than that, find some flat pieces of wood or something, but basically what it is is the rubber doesn't really compress, the coasters don't really compress, the car playing cards don't compress, and it only takes that much to make a difference. And that's graphic slip. Definitely a little heavier. 
This is a pro Italian slate. So you get Italian slate prior to 2005, you'll see Italian slate on old houses. Since this table has already been put together, we're going to use holes to find the old holes. And once you find the old hole, we just like to make sure that the slate is actually centered on the table. And that feels really good. Two more. And this one, they put a little marking when they took it apart last time, so that's what we're going off of. And the reason why we use the alls is so that we can find the old holes. That's everything for the pool table. And basically, uh, what we did was put replace the slate exactly where it went. Pete came here last with the Billiard Factory, San Antonio, and he put head. So we were able to match head with head. So that's nice. Um, so being that they took it apart, being that they took it apart last professionally, um, they did a really clean job. Now what we're going to do is put a blanket on top of the pool table. Now that we have the slate on and we're going to uh, start the refill. And that's our next step. The cloth that we have has a face sticker. So that means that that piece goes faced up on the install. Also comes with black chalk. That way we have matching chalk and two extra spots just so you can come on your table. Now championship spots, yes please. The championship spots are, leave a little residue behind sometimes. So uh, they do have master spots, they're a little better quality. Usually on a whole house and table, I'll put a master spot because well, it's quality. Okay. There are two different tools you can use for 
removing staples. You can get this at Harbor Freight or uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or any hardware store. It's a staple remover. Or in Llano, Texas, Lubbock, Texas, the berries, they make custom tools for upholstery uh, in particular. This is probably the best tool because it has a little more uh, ridge and everything. It's a little less twisty and this one you have to twist your hand a little more to remove staples. And I'll show you. And of course these are the awls that we use to find the old holes in the slate so that we don't have to make new screw holes. So in order to take off the felt, we cut the felt first, put the rail like this, and I'm going to grab the razor, and what we're going to do is we're going to cut the bottom part of the cloth. Now being that this cloth is very new, it's kind of a bummer that we're cutting and taking it off, but it's what's going on. Once you cut that, and you have that flat, you can move here, Lydia. You can have that flap right there, um, you have all this material cut. You're going to have a feather strip down in here. And when you pull this feather strip out, you got to be careful because sometimes it'll break. So, pull it up, and look, that one comes out easy because it's real thin material. But you can also lift this a little bit to assist it to come out. Or some people put it down right here and pull it out so it doesn't pull the feather strip up and explode it into five million pieces. Okay? She's going to start removing staples. Sometimes the wood is soft, and you can pull it out. That you will use that to your advantage pulling off the cloth first because sometimes the staples will come out with the cloth completely and you don't have any staples to pull. Notice here the staples came out partially on some of them, so she's just gonna come back around with either the store-bought tool, which you have to kind of grab, spin around, and pop it up. What I like to do is put my hand, my other hand over it so it, the staples don't go flying. But once you get all those out, throw them all away. You want to take out all the staples, especially on the corners and the sides, but all the staples, because when you're stapling on top of staples, it will jam your gun. And we use a dual fast gun. This one is not the harbor, not the hardware store gun. This is the dual fast, uh, I think it's like a 3100 or 5100 series, the CS5000. So you can get this for 50, 60 bucks, or you can go to Home Depot and get that chisel point T10 staple gun, which you're probably bleeding more than anything because uh, they, have, they do have chisel points and you can get yourself. That one also doesn't have a tension to where you can push tension down and get uh, the staple driven in further. So that's something to think about. It costs a little more to use the CS5000, but it's because we're, uh, we do this all day every day. So we really need to have the proper tools to get our job done. Again, we're gonna cut the cloth on the bottom side like this. To get it off. You can see the feather strip in there. This piece of white wood is a feather strip. That is what pops out naturally, right? Once you get all that off, I'm just gonna rip this excess off so we're not gonna need that. And this Olhausen rubber that they have is called AccuFast rubber. This stuff is guaranteed to last uh, forever, basically. Um, they did the research and development and really created the best product out there. Uh, so I think as far as the installer and playability, I think uh, Olhausen makes a good table. Now the pockets can be kind of wide sometimes for, for people who really want to get competitive and stuff. But for them, I say to uh, do what they call a double facing. And every now and then this rubber facing right here, this rubber, trapezoid looking thing will be uh, wrong uh, will be uh, another one will be added on top of it to make that pocket just a hair smaller 
some people want it to where you can only fit two bowls and and nothing else and or not even squeeze one bowl and you might as well buy a snooker table if you want to do all that and put regular cue balls on it but again we're gonna i'm just starting this table so i have a little flap to grab onto and i'm gonna pull pray pray that most of the staples come out Now what we're doing is we put the blanket down on the table to protect the surface of the rail from getting any nicks or mars on it. And the cloth all right here, you just want to make sure that you don't drop any staples down. And because uh, as you're pulling staples, you're going to be moving it around and you'll be scratching up the rails. So that's why I get on Lydia's case over here not to be dropping staples and scratching my rails, you know. She does a really good job though. Ain't that right? When she listens, you hear it straight from her, straight from the mouth. I won't say the horse's mouth. She's not a horse. She's my mother. So we got uh, six rails to do, but I'll show you how to put the cloth on here shortly. You just gotta pull some staples. And that's really the biggest, the biggest part of this whole ordeal is pulling the staples. And again, if you don't pull the staples, I mean. I mean, you could essentially just half-ass it and leave everything uh, looking like that and just put cloth over it. But I'll tell you what, don't, don't do that. Because uh, especially if you're in someone's house and they're watching you, they're, you know, it's just going to look like a real slop job. So definitely be thorough and do the job right. And that's what we learned working at the billiard factory for many years is that as long as you're thorough and clean and do a good job, um, you hardly have any callbacks ever unless they call you back to say, hey, good job. So um, this is basically what we're gonna do is we gotta strip these six rails and then we're gonna grab a mallet and grab our staple gun, grab quarter inch staples, anything longer is just too much. So you want to do a quarter inch. They make like a five eighths and all that, but even five eighths is a little that much longer than a quarter inch, even though it's like an eighth of an inch or a few centimeters. But it definitely uh, digs into the wood and uh, get a little harder to take out. If you're using the t t T10 staples, a lot of times the head will break. And that will mean that you're gonna need some pliers also. Um, if any staples break, you do wanna take them out because if there's a little nub sticking out, it will definitely stab you in the finger. So today we're putting together a Pro 8, which is an eight and a half, uh, two inches wider, four inches longer than an eight foot table. So it's a little bit smaller than a nine, a little bit bigger than an eight. And again, this one we're going to call the uh, the Virginian because it has a Virginian leg on like a Santa Ana uh, frame. But I'm pretty sure the Virginian pool table doesn't have this frame. It has a uh, a southern a southern frame, which is a straight cabinet at the bottom instead of this little arch uh, router look that we have right here. So that has like an arch. Definitely a good table. Um, I don't think it's a Seville. I haven't got a date on it, but definitely pre-2005. Yeah. Do you see that one here? The man staple? That's the stair. Yes. Go ahead and get it. So now you're going to take the cloth right here. Finger says face. Well, when you face facing down, because after you pound that feather strip in, you're going to roll the cloth over and the face will be faced up. There we go. Come on. There it goes. Right. So I push down right here in the corner. Kind of washy there a little bit. And then barely tap it. And the whole thing is to get the cloth down in there without beating the crap out of it. But what I do here is 
I don't leave any excess right here on this side because when we fold the cloth over, you'll kind of see like extra cloth underneath it and that's not good. So if you have excess like so, where you're gonna end up with excess coming out the front of here, you can pound it down and then this extra material hit it with the razor against the feather strip before you pound the wood all the way down and slice it with a nice sharp razor. And I'll show you. Because that will, uh, and before you get it all the way down, brand new razor is always nice because uh, it will allow you to uh, cut better without messing up. And again, I've been doing this for so long that I don't have to do these cuts like this because I get rid of it from the very beginning. And then you tuck this behind that flap and then just kind of get that down like that, right? Then you're good, there's no more excess. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this over and we're gonna pound it down. Now that's pounded down. Make sure there's no trash underneath it. Sometimes this, these wood pieces of wood from when you're taking the staples out, they break off the rail and they'll get underneath. Sometimes people will pound the cloth on, then put it down, take out the staples, and that's when the wood falls in underneath the rail. So make sure your work site is clean, get your rails ready, and then we're gonna start stapling. staple pattern um, so basically I start in the middle and I do one uh, let's see if I can do this um, I'll do where are we at? one staple here one staple here and then one in the middle like the middle middle so, and then that just kind of anchors it down. As you're stapling, you're pulling the cloth away from the rail. Here, I'll get a better angle right here. Pulling the cloth um, up towards you and then over the rail this way, taking out any slack that's going to be on the surface of the rail. Sometimes if the rail is heavy, if it's like a picture frame rail, you, you'll end up with something like this and you'll have all this extra material and this means you didn't pull tight enough when you were stapling. With that upgraded material, if you pull too tight, sometimes the cloth comes out, so you have to thicken up the feather strip. If you have to thicken up the feather strip, I'll show you how to do it and uh, make it really easy to where you're not drilling, uh, tapping nails in or stapling into the feather strip into the wood because that's just it's not necessary. This one, I'm going to pull tight towards me, pull left, and tack it down. And then I'm just going to staple all the way down as I'm pulling the cloth towards the apron. Okay. And then this is the side pocket. So let me just show you this is the side pocket right here. There are many ways to do it. Easiest way to do it is tack it down. Bring this corner down to the front of the rail and you want a flat face. There's going to be some extra material right here, but don't worry about that too much. Just tack it down. And then get your finger right here, fold it over, and that's where we're going to get our nice seam when we fold it over. So, we, what we don't want is for this middle piece to come up like that. We want it to be where it's flat folded and then fold it over. Then you can tack it in twice there. Now, you'll see when people get a razor blade and they will cut this excess right here, which is good because it makes that pad right here a little less, okay? And just, it makes it a little cleaner as well, okay? So with that said, boom, and then just give it another right there. And then we're gonna, 
Alpha any excess. Okay. And then you want to make sure this eyelet right here is open so that you can get your pocket screw in there. And that's going to be a Phillips screw. Moving on, when you get to the when you get to the other side, this is going to be your corner. And the corner is a little more difficult only because it does not have a fold. We did a fold on the on the side pocket because well, we it's. It's too much of an angle to not have a fold. You can get away with it on coin-op tables, like bar tables, but really this one, uh, just want to do it like that. So now you can put, pull this face, this cloth right here, over this face at the same angle and make it tight and then tack in a staple. Now to get, when you start stapling all the cloth down, you're going to end up with some extra material right here. And uh, you're gonna be wondering, well, how do I get rid of all that material? Because it's not gonna look right, and there's gonna be a fold right there in the corner. Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab this material, pull it, and stretch it outwards. And that is going to literally get rid of the thing altogether, the, uh, the excess altogether. So now, there's nothing, and it's flat. So with that being flat, what we're gonna do is just take, again, pull in the cloth towards the apron to make sure it's tight, so that when you flip it on its side, and you fill down the line, there's no bubbles in the, in the material, and that's gonna be perfect. Now, there's this little extra flap right here. We're gonna wanna roll this, roll this material down a little bit and kinda hide it in there get down in there I'm doing this without looking at, I'm looking at the camera without looking at the cloth and make sure there's no ripples right here going towards the middle because it just doesn't look right and then just tack it right here on the side one time fold it back on its back and just give it one more to grow on and then cut that with that said that is one row and you don't want to staple over your screw holes uh, where the rail bolts go in through the slate because if you staple over those, if you cover those or staple over them, you're not going to be able to screw your rail into them. If your rail goes, if your rail bolt has cloth, if the hole has cloth blocking it and the rail bolt goes into it, it will take the cloth with it and it will strip out in there and you won't be able to take it off. So good luck. Okay. Since that first one is done, I'll set up a blanket for us so that later we can put the pockets on later on. The pockets are real easy. The way we do it is we do a long side rail and two short end rails. The long side rail has both the side pockets connected to the rails. So it'll make one long side rail. And then for the SO and the other rail goes on this one, Side pocket is the smallest pocket with a, a little C, not the big C. Of course, it's going to go like that. Here's another rail. This is the head rail. It says Olhausen. The nameplate signifies the head rail, usually where you break from. Again, yeah, we're going to pound the cloth on. We'll grab it, make sure the face is facing down. We're going to flip it over the feather strip. You do this, you watch this video as you're putting it together, as you're refelting, you'll be all right. So let's just say this snapped, right? This one snapped. We're going to grab the blue tape. And call the feather strip broken, right? So this sometimes when you pull an antique, you pull the cloth off, boom, it explodes into 700 pieces, right? Replace the feather strip completely. If you don't have feather strips, go to the local billiard store and ask them for some feather strips. They usually have a, a ton of them extra because a lot of times uh, pool tables get sent with one or two extra with different manufacturers. So if you have a small break, just one crack, 
just use about two inch piece of tape or one inch piece of tape. If you have it broken multiple places within four inches, just do four inches worth so it's just one strip and you're done with it. And this is just my example. We're saying that it's broken right here. And then what we wanna do is put the two pieces together and tape over the top of the crack where the crack's in the middle of the tape and then fold the sides down. And this is a uh, one inch tape, maybe one and a quarter inch tape. Fold it down like this. That way the tape cut not only covers the crack, so you can't fill it over the cloth or under the cloth, but it tapes the whole thing together and any excess tape is gonna be underneath. So it's not like, it's not gonna be in the way of whatever you're doing on top. Okay. There are guys out there who will say, grab your gun and staple the feather strip right here if the cloth is too loose. And we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna get a pocket nail and tack a pocket nail in there to keep the cloth in, no. If the cloth is too loose, for example, if you put the cloth in and only one layer of cloth is between the feather strip and the two, like I, I did the first one. We're gonna call this a Brunswick, and this is just where you slip the back side in, right here, and then the feather strip just goes right in there, right? So let me just show you. This cloth, this feather strip is gonna be too loose and pulled out, right? So if you have material like that where it's too loose and pulling out, what you wanna do again is this time, you're gonna tape from the bottom of your feather strip because it's gonna do a layer of tape on this side, a layer of tape on the bottom, and a layer of tape on the side, thickening up the feather strip that much to pinch that cloth in. It is literally a millimeter that it's having problems with. So we're gonna do it again, is center up the cloth down the rail nice and evenly, get this feather strip, put it right at the end. Push it down a little and pound it out where there's no excess so that I don't have to cut. Okay, so there's no excess in the front so I don't have to worry about anything looking on uh, rip or uh, bulge or anything. The reason why we use a mallet is so we're not damaging our beautiful face. And you don't have to smash it as long as you have a good workbench underneath and you don't have a lot of give on that workbench, you don't have to smash it. There's a guy at the uh, Billy Factory in Austin. Couldn't tell you his name, probably because he didn't last long, but he uh, would work on this workbench and uh, the whole workbench would be going like that as he was pounding the cloth and it just didn't make any sense because he, he didn't have any resistance to help the feather strip go down. And of course he put a hundred thousand staples and when he pounded the feather strip up here, he was smacking it so hard that the feather strip recessed down in there and you were able to fill a gap between the cloth uh, recessed down in there so it was kind of a dip. So we don't want that dip. Especially if you're delivering five thousand, six thousand dollar tables brand new, you want to make sure that's great quality to begin with, right? You don't want to deliver brand new stuff and be fixing it at their house as as you're delivering it. But you know that's what they call quality control, and that's where you either retrain them from what they've been doing, and hopefully they can straighten up a little bit or uh, figure out how to another way. So again, I was pulling the cloth and pulling it this way for a corner pocket. And then this is also a corner pocket because it's a head rail. So we're going to get this cloth, push it up against the face, tack it down, grab it, pull it, and a little bit towards the, the right. And that will get rid of that uh, coolie from the box. Yes. Awesome. Very, very, yeah. Awesome, awesome. And again, it got rid of all that bubble, and now we just play it out. 
Same thing on this side, bubble's already gone, so. And again, don't cover up the, the holes when you staple, right? So, and then when you cut, you can just cut around it, or you can take the blade and do it how Pete does it. He starts to cut over here, and he just works it all the way down. And that way you're not making three cuts, you're just making one long one. Pretty easy, but different strokes, different folks. And there's no wrong way to do it. There are many ways to skin a cat. Tack down a little side one. Tack down another little side one. I like to pull and make sure that I don't have any ripples on this front face right here. Because a lot of times when you're pulling and pinching, it might create a little bubble right here. So here, you can pull this this piece just a little bit down this way and it sometimes gets rid of those if you have them. And after I do that, just tack down one more for good measure right here. Uh, try not to get too close to the eyelet right here with your staple because sometimes you could actually staple and break this eyelet off. If the eyelet is already broken because people have been sagging on the pockets and stuff, if that wood is still there, sometimes they will re-glue it in there and then often you'll see like a staple in here kind of holding it together. And that's two, that's the hip rail. If you feel the feather strip uh, up a little bit anywhere, you can always come back and put your rail down a little bit and just give it a little, a little loving. These have wood feather strips, good quality ones. Um, the ones with the uh, lower end tables, you'll often see um, a rubber feather strip or a plastic feather strip. The rubber stretches, if you stretch the rubber as you're applying the cloth when it's brand new, the next time you take the rubber off, it's gonna shrink like three or four inches down here in the channel. So as you're repounding on the new stuff, you have to stretch that rubber again to, to make it uh, reach the end to the complete feather strip. So again, I push my weight against the rail so it doesn't fall off the table. Sometimes ta uh, the rails will have a natural uh, counterbalance and want to just roll off the table and smash it onto the floor. So you get feather strips started. Make sure you have these feather strips since this is another head rail or a foot rail. It has two uh, two corner pockets. It'll have two slanted edges. When it has a side pocket, it has a flat edge. Pound it where you don't have too much excess coming out the front. So usually I'll have it out a quarter inch because when it goes down, it goes down a quarter inch. It tucks that extra in. Just like that, it goes away. Now there's a little bit showing right here, but guess what? It's gone now. Come back, give it a once over. Oh, so long. Oh, good. That's a good example. Lydia just broke a feather strip for us. So that she. Just playing, it was, already, it was already broken, but it's okay because we have tape. And that's the thing, sometimes the wood, the wood itself has a grain or like a knot and the wood is just weak right there and a lot of times it'll just snap. That was a corner pocket, so I was able to pull them all a little bit that way and get rid of that extra bubble. Run it all the way down. Again, this is a corner pocket. I'll show you again as a side face. This will be our third example of this repetition, okay? You're gonna grab it up like this, you're gonna pull it, staple, pull, staple, pull, go to the right a little, staple, pull, go to the right a little, staple, pull, right a little, staple. The reason why we're pulling and going to the right is because it's lowering this. Cloth, there's no more ripples. So now look how much extra cloth there is. There's not any. And if you look right here, the staples are almost, uh, if I can get it, almost lapping each other. They're pretty close to each other. So they can almost be by each other, or they can be higher up, a little lower, I think, as long as they're not smashing into each other, bending all over the place. If you put a staple in and it bends or doesn't go in, just take it out with your staple remover. It's not worth a uh, 
messing around with later on because it's only going to snag you, snag your finger and cut you. All right, rip your clothing. Same thing in the slate. If you don't take all the staples out when you're moving it or something, you're going to scratch other pieces of slate if there's staples underneath and you're stacking them or uh, you're going to walk past it and grab your, your pant leg and rip your, your a hole in your pocket pretty pretty good if the staples are sharp, especially when they're broken. All right. so that's three, okay? And of course, we're going to just do it once there. But that looks really good. And then, of course, since this is an end rail, the end pockets, they're just going to go on. Like this. And then you're just going to you're gonna get uh, the Phillips screws that come with it, the hardware, right here. And you're just going to start them off. Uh, I recommend hand threading them in there. Hand threading them in there because if you use a screwdriver or a tool uh, prior to it, you can often um, cross thread it and strip it out. So rather not strip it out, grab the pocket like this and push it towards the rail to close up that eyelet <clears throat> and then have access to it. And these are machined nicely, so most of the time you can get to it without having to do too much pushing towards the pocket into the rail. Sometimes if, it, uh, if the pocket is hanging or something, <clears throat> the actual screws aren't even lining up. They're like twisted a little bit, so you're just trying to put it in the middle, it just still never work. So I cut the rail. <clears throat> Again, we cut the we cut the bottom of the rail, that way we're not cutting the surface of it, but we kind of cut the bottom part of it. Um, yeah. And then that way uh, we can see if we can pull the staples out. And look, another fast strip came out broken. So again, I'll show you how to do that real quick. And these are in there really good. So unfortunately, you gotta pull them with the stapler remover. And the most time consuming bit is gonna be with the stapler, with the stapler remover. Um, you can also carry some pliers with you. And some people will go about it by uh, just popping them off like this, popping them all, and then coming back with the pliers and prying, plying them all off, prying them all off. But uh, this tool right here has enough of, of a, a head right here, it angles and arches, that if you put the rail close enough to the edge and you grab the staple and you just push down, it takes the staple out. So you don't have to twist your wrist or anything where you'll see we call this one Pete's Tag Puller because it's a Pete's favorite. But you have to go in here like this and gouge it and then pop it up. And then you have to find the center part of it and grab it and then twist it. And so there's a lot more into it versus that. Boom, done. So now I carry that. I carry Pete's Tag Puller because when we take pockets off of the pool table when we detach the leather from the pool table liner that one right here is flat enough to get in there give it some pride and take it off where this one it, it's just a lot funkier so definitely we carry it because it's definitely necessary and then of course we're gonna pull some get the staples finished and we got three rails left and then we'll be done ready to start leveling the pool table and we already leveled the frame, so we already got a little bit of a head start on the leveling process, but we want to make sure the frame is perfectly level underneath the legs. And we want to make sure the center slate is perfectly level long waist so that when we start leveling underneath the slate, none of that is playing with the way the ball rolls on either direction. It doesn't look like we have anybody live or watching our live feed yet, but that's okay. Can we have that on live? We're on live. We're live right now. Oh. 
We're gone, we've gone live, Lydia. Hi, you're recording this when I get the post to video. Uh, this, is, this is the live video. So anyone who's had any, any uh, problems with uh, my time-lapse videos on how to assemble or how to refill and uh, have only got me flying through these videos with like 15, 30 second videos and, and just didn't teach you anything, today's the day. Today is the day that you get to learn um, what really needs to be done when you want to do it yourself on your pool table. And there are different hacks and different ways we can go about doing stuff. And of course, you can do it. Anyone can do this job. You just gotta, in, in, a, in a regular person who doesn't do this every day, uh, just uh, take your time. And if you have any questions, just call the call your local billiards store. Um, we love it when uh, people try to do it themselves. Um, but if it's gonna if it's gonna risk you uh, messing up your cloth when you're trying to refill it, I personally don't think it's worth buying material for two hundred and fifty dollars and messing it up. Uh, trying to apply it yourself. So a lot of times you can probably pay like a hundred or 120 or something in a rail labor and take the uh, Rails back to the billiard go take your rails to the billiard store and ask them to put the cloth on for you and take your rails with you uh, the rail cloth so that they can apply it, but at the end of the day if you buy the cloth for 220 or whatever from the billiard store, and then you try to do it yourself and mess it up, you end up paying more than just having the guys come out and do it um, from the beginning. Also, if you don't level your pool table properly when you're putting it together, you're never gonna have any fun on it if the balls don't roll right. So is it worth getting it done professionally? I'd say so. Um, but um, again, if you're that if you're that uh, do-it-yourself kind of person, um, I say power to you, man, and and, uh, and don't, uh, don't let me scare you away from a good time. So again, we're tapering on the top of the crack, and then we're folding down so we don't have to see that. If you don't tape the top of the crack of the feather strip when you pound the cloth on, one piece will rise up, and you'll be able to see it underneath the cloth, and somebody will complain about it for sure. Stick her down. Push in the bottom corner a little bit just to get it started. And again, as I'm as I'm pounding it down, I'm putting the cloth in and out to gauge where it needs to be so that no excess is coming out the edge when by the time I finish. Hold this over. And then, now, you want to make sure that the cloth has enough excess on each end, mainly the side pocket, because you are going to fold over and then fold over again. So you want to make sure you have that excess right here. Okay? And again, always make sure there's no staples or anything underneath your rails as you're working. Because then you'll be paying for a new set of rails. And again, we are using quarter inch staples. There are 916 staples, and you can see the difference. The reason why we use 916 staples is either the wood is too chewed up right here, like on an antique or something, we'll use a bigger staple. But we use those 916s to staple the pockets into the liner, uh, the f fingers on the pockets, the flaps, the staple them on so it secures the netting. That's the only reason really why we use those netting sticks. And again, I'm gonna start in the middle, pull up this way, tack it down, grab the edge over here at the side pocket, pull it out and back. The reason why I pull it out is to get the stretch on this piece, that way when I go down the line, it's nice and easy. Come over here, you got, again, corner flat. 
film, grab it, pull to the right, grab, pull to the right, pull to the right, pull to the right, one more time, and that basically flattened this whole piece out right here. I know it might get, be, get a little repetitive, but that's exactly what it is. And if you can do it uh, once or twice, by, the, by your sixth rail, you're gonna be a pro, uh, pro installer, okay? But uh, the best thing about this is don't cut anything until you're happy with what you stapled. If you're not happy, get your stapler remover, pull it all out, and pull the cloth all over again, and try that again. Oh, and that was a side pocket. I'll show you some more side pockets here in a bit, um, just because I just breezed through that one real quick. I like to cut just the um, little eyelets up like this because then I have a little extra cloth just in case ever I had to take it off and fix something underneath I could have something to pull on where some people will cut right along the staples and now we have to staple closer to the edge if, if, uh, if we don't have anything to staple onto and it's a little more uh, ridiculous to have to deal with. So do yourself a favor as an installer or anybody and leave yourself a little bit of excess. Nothing that's gonna show that's gonna be a that's gonna look ugly because ultimately we are looking for a furniture look at the end of the day. And with that said, we're looking to have it nice and clean looking, whatever we do. Again, this feather strip is broken right on the top right there, so I'm gonna tape the top portion of it. Make sure it lines up nice and smooth. And just pull the walls down like that. Okay, and you don't see any broken. This has an angle right here, this feather strip, so it's not this flat side portion. Just for perspective doesn't go there because it has an angle. This one's flat, so it goes there, okay? And again, the angle is, uh, matches up with the, the side of the pocket like that. So it has a natural angle already. If you have to make a feather strip and you wanna achieve that angle, uh, first of all, put your feather, if it's a longer one, you put it on there, you, you score it right where the end of the rail is to kind of give you a gauge, and then you take a hammer and just chisel it all the way through, and that will size up your strip. On the side, the angled one, just put your razor blade at an angle, mark it, take it to the side, chisel it, and uh, punch it off, and then you have a feather strip made. If you had a broken one blown apart, you had to go get a brand new feather strip. That's how you would size it. Because the feather strips, they come in like four or five foot lengths and stuff. So, I mean, not really five foot, maybe like 48 inch lengths. So, it's definitely enough to get by. I had a little bit of excess right here, but again, nothing. Have your blade down at an angle a little bit into the feather strip, which is still has a little has a little something to hit because I haven't pounded it all the way down. Had I pounded it all the way down, my finger would touch the cloth. If your razor blade slips and hits the cloth, you get a hole. Now you have to pull that cloth in further. It might shorten this too much where you can't staple it. again is what we're gonna do is say first anchor the middle and then grab the the part of cloth that's closest to the edge of the rail 
Grab that, pull it towards you a little bit, and pull it away a little bit. You're pulling away, that way you can tighten this stuff when you staple. You don't have to worry about any bubbles. Okay, and then again, we're going to, on this one, we're going to drop the face down in here, tack it, get rid of this. Then we're gonna come with the blade, and we're gonna score that, and then we're gonna score up towards us. And that will, oops, that will allow you to uh, get something like this. And then I'm just gonna take it where I had cut and strip away, and then fold this down like that over and it makes it nice and tight okay now anchor that down you see there's some excess right here we're not going to worry about that we're going to pull this tight we need to use up all these staples uh pull this tight anchor and then here we're just gonna fold roll this we're gonna roll it this top inside portion down in there like so pull it a little tight and just give it a little tack um, so that now one two three it's closed and we just cut that's easy we still have the eyelet so that we can put our screw in okay and you still you still have this hole. So this hole you don't want to cover with when you when you're tucking this down. That's why I roll it. And there's also a little piece in here that's kind of shaved off for the wood so that the cloth can recess down in there and accommodate that extra material. Alright, I know it's been an hour, but hang in there. We're almost done refelting the rails. This is a corner piece. I think we've seen enough of these. I'm gonna pull in and pull away and uh, get rid of this bump okay so i'll do one more of those there it looks nice and flat and, then and again without stapling too far forward to where you're covering that hole for the rail bolt you don't want to cover that and then i'm just going to do the same thing with the space over here make it nice and pretty and Oh, I didn't put that key back in the key lock. No, I just threw it like on the way. Yeah, I'm gonna do it right now. Yeah, we do this yeah. And lock it and like change the code. Or, yeah, and change the code. They have the cleaning people. Oh, look at this. See the camera? Yeah, I do anything. Unless you're doing something wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> so there's a camera in this house and I was over there doing the potty dance in the main living room. So hopefully uh, if he does see that, hopefully he gets a good laugh. Hi Jim. I'm also going to be sending this link to the homeowner so he can see what we, what the shenanigans we've been getting into at his house. Well, no one's here. Olivia was almost there. She she left the cloth on. She didn't want to rip it off. But had she ripped it off this rail, it has a, a real soft wood. All the staples would have just popped off for her. So, roofing mistake. Me? Were they hard to take out? These ones? No. no. The cloth would have ripped them off. Well. Right. I think my strength for ripping the cloth out is not that great, but as great as yours. I was trying to get that last part ripped off, and I just couldn't. So now that we've gone this far, we're going to grab all the pocket screws. Lydia's going to grab all the pocket screws and pockets and put them over here with the rails, and uh, we're going to stage a little rail area so we get the pockets connected.
You ready to play some pool here in a bit? Yeah. <laughs> And then I anchor the middle, I grab, I pull towards the apron and away. Because we want to make sure that this is flat. If we don't pull away, we might have some excess. Run it down the line. Put it in here. Get rid of the ripple. This is our ripple right now. It's, I mean, it's, it's a lot of material. We make that disappear. Three staples, okay. So it doesn't take much, it doesn't take 40 staples right there. Three will do it if you do it right. Okay, and then I'll show you this facing one more time, the last time. Anchor it, get rid of that little excess so it's not bothering you. Cut down here. And remember, you don't have to do this cut right here it but what you do is you staple this down and you just make sure when you pinch it over that this inside material doesn't come over like this because then you'll have something looking like that it just won't look right it'll be kind of uh, scrubbed up so make sure all that's pushed down bring it like that boom you can tack that right there it's done but for the sake of consistency we are going to continue doing it the way this this uh, method is which is rip off that excess so that you don't have much uh, excess underneath the flap, the fold. And again, we get rid of that a little bit. It's You still have the hole to deal with, and it's on that face that's kind of made for us anyways. You made sure those gaps are closed, yes? when you're on the blanket, okay? okay. Like if you lift up one end, it could go off the edge and scratch the tile. Now that we got the rails done um, pretty easily, we are going to clear off the table and start doing some leveling. During this time, after uh, Lydia finishes with the uh, with the pockets, we're gonna look into putting some facings on the on the corners um, and the sides. But if we don't have much material, because it is a pro eight table, we have an eight foot cut. We might not have the excess on the cloth to really cut it off. So. I'll, I'll uh, try and find some little strips such as this so that we can glue on to about right here and it just adds a little padding for a ricochet and you, and you don't see the line out when you staple the cloth on because we have to make some cuts in here. The side pocket's more than the corner pockets. Chris, I need your help. Alright, 
So now we're at this point. Um, I'd say that the material that I do have is probably a little bit short to cut off too many feather strips. So basically use what we have from the excess from the rails. But just to make sure, we can grab the claw like so. Fold it in half. Like this, fold in half long ways. Uh, we're talking, I'm sorry, hamburger saddle, not taco. Hamburger fold, not taco. Put it halfway on the side pocket and on the edge, and it shows me that I have two inches overhang, so I am going to cut a strip off. <laughs> Let's a strip off the short side, or not the short side, the short side of the cloth, not long ways, but the shortest, um, which is, this is long ways because it's the whole cloth, you fold it in half, this is short ways, because this short ways will only go across the, from side to side, not from end to end. So I made that little cut. This cloth usually rips pretty straight, so I'm going to rip that, and sure enough, it didn't, right? So the first rip sometimes is a little funky. I'm gonna go ahead and score it again. I'm doing about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter strip. And the second one usually strips up, rips very straight. And this one, it kind of tapered down just a hair, but that's okay because we only need six. Six right about five or six inches. So you can do this. Five, six, okay. So that should give you your six. Then go back and cut those open. This is just a little added measure to protect your uh, investment. And of course we got six out of it. Three, six, yes. And if your partner, if your helper is taking a long time to cut these strips, they need to quit bullshit and get to work. So here you go, there's a whole bunch of uh, feather strips. We put these on the side, covering up the hole, not too far on the plane surface, because we're gonna spray some glue on these. When you spray the glue, get a little piece of cardboard, use it as a little buffer so you're not spraying the cat in underneath. If they have any pre-existing flaps, this one was camel before, so we have a camel flap on here. We're going to take that off. It was also stapled, so we're going to remove the staples as well. Perfect. 
for this leg is just going to go around the top. Bohausen has a uniliner, and then the liner, and then the slate on top of that, which all of it is playing at home perfectly. And that looks really good. So, since the center slate looks really good, we're going to walk over here and check this end slate. End slate says perfect. We're going to come over here and see what this says. It says perfect. Can't check them all. Uh, so basically, what I'm seeing here is this slate, middle slate is perfect, this slate looks perfect, but that one over there naturally looks like it's coming towards this way, towards the middle. So if it does, that's not going to be good. So grab an Aramith bowl. He has a box of Aramith bowls. Um, I carry a Lucky 13 Aramith, uh, just so we always have it. And we're going to roll the ball to see what it says. So the bubble shows a little low this way, and we're, the ball's gonna tell us true though. Sometimes the lighting, uh, the lighting within the room can play play tricks on you. Go ahead and roll it back, and then a little slower will show you if it's gonna make any uh, change in course. So it rolls really good, but it does have a little a little roll this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this slate. Go ahead and pull the slate. She'll show, you, she'll show you what I mean when I say pull the slate. And you just pull it a few inches. So we can get our hands in there. Pull it a little more. And then what we need to do is grab some shims. So I'm, uh, I have a little bag of shims. Um, usually I have a little bunch of squares and I break them, but I'm running a little low chance right now. So what we want to do is find the thickness of a playing card. That's why I say you can use a playing card because that's basically the thickness. And this is what you call a super thin. So I'm going to grab three super thins and we're, we're going, are actually three thins and we're going to place them. Okay, I'm ready. And when we place them, we're going to lift, lift the center plate. We're going to grab here and lift, go ahead, place it underneath, and then grab the next one and place it underneath the center, like so, to where we're halfway underneath this one and halfway sticking out to accommodate this one. Halfway sticking under this one, halfway so this one can land on top of it making it rise just a little bit because we want to lift it because it's rolling towards the middle so we're actually lifting it to roll straight let's see what the ball says now and we replace it we lift it over and replace the slate and seam it back up and then she's going to roll the ball now a little goes a long way so if, if you if you put too much in and you put something thinner put something thinner the thinnest is the thickness of a playing card Let's pull it again. Now that we've put something underneath, we're both gonna double team it, lift it, and pull. And then we're gonna add uh, another thin. Let's do that. Go ahead, one, two, three. Okay. And then make sure that one's butted up. We always like to make sure the center slate didn't move because every time you lift it, it kind of goes off the third piece on the far end. So we just want to make sure there's no gap. Replace it with the head. And that does. So now the ball rolls straight. Oh. Yeah, so now the ball rolls straight. Now since we lifted, since we lifted right here between these two, it may have thrown this one off. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the center slate for roll. If the center slate says it still looks good, then at the very beginning, the center slate and the uh, end slate look perfect. So if this one hasn't changed at all, then we're on the limit. But it did. It went this way a little bit. So again, we're going to pull this. And we're going to add some super thins, only because it wasn't much. Okay. Actually, we'll do it thin, just to see if that helps. Okay, you can do those too. 
and we lift together and we hold it up. That way, uh, I can put my second one. Once you get this to where you like it, uh, to where you lift it, we're not gonna replace the end just yet. We're gonna roll the middle one first so that you're not redoing the end too much. Because if you didn't put it enough, you're gonna have to remove it all over again. And then just roll it straight. Yeah, I will start it straight. So that looks really good. We're gonna move to the last one. And it may take you longer to roll and everything, only because uh, I've been doing this for so long, so I just know exactly what to add. So roll that one and see what it says. And this one is probably going to tell us that it's going that way, but it's not perfect. So ultimately, when we started, the table was sagging towards the middle a little bit, and we just raised uh, the end up. Raise this one up, raise this one up, and then raise this one up, and it made it perfect. Okay, so we're done. After that, we do the screws in. So that's when we come over here and grab the hardware that I dumped out in the ball box. It's nice to have the ball box for a little tray for you. And of course, these are the slate screws that we are going to be using to put into the tray. Now, this is a this is a big screw head, so it's a number three, a number three head, and that means that it's not going to be your regular Phillips screwdriver. It's going to be the big one. So next to it, we have the big boy screwdriver. This is a number three but you can see how the head is a lot uh, bigger than a regular uh, screwdriver head. Okay. And again, we have, I have the uh, same one here. Again, it's a little beefier. This right here is gonna allow the head to go in further and not slip if you use the regular one and try to do it in there, it will slip. And you'll strip it out, and then you have to drill this out with a drill bit, and then pull it out, and then get pliers and pull the whole screw out after that. So don't do that. Did you take my Yeah. And then since we use the awls, and we know that the table, the table is centered everywhere, all around them we can just get to work and start screwing them in. And we know we're going to use the same holes because we stuck the holes down in the hole and it fell right in the place. This tells me everything is square. And we run around, put these down. So get them as flush between the two as possible. This table was, this slate was milled all at once. So it was once one giant sheet of slate and they cut it in three pieces.
There you go then. Now you screw them all in, screw them all in. Then we're doing it, that's the way we're doing it. Oh, two long rows, two short rows. Two long rows. Can you tighten a little bit? Yeah, but. And there are always two left over? Yeah, those are extra. We're going to put those in the pool. Yeah, you're good. Okay. They had a U shape last time, and we're just doing it different. Here, I'm just making sure that the seams are perfectly flat. Where this one's high, this one's low. Come back this one out a little bit and put a, a wedge in here to raise it up. The big hammer. So now we're under the table. It's center, center. This is the center slate in the center of the, from left to right, center, center is what we call it. If I needed the wedge on the outside, we say outside center, outside towards this way, outside far, you know? And then I'm gonna put the other one in here. Now where I'm going is in between the liner and the frame. There's the black and then this white liner. We're going in between that. Is if you try to go between the slate and the liner, nothing's going to happen because the liner's glued to the slate. Okay? And I kind of know how much it needed, so we're going to just call it that much. And that over here, raise this up, and I raise this up, but they're going to need just a little bit more. Um, and that's how that's done. Because they are far enough underneath the rail 
to where the ball's not going to roll on the surface. Now the Brazilian slate nowadays on Olhausen's, you kind of have to cover at least half the hole because uh, the ball can potentially roll on the surface, but what ends up happening is the kids poke down in there and they can poke holes if, uh, if they're uh, relentless. It takes a lot to tear the claw. It really would take a blade or something to tear it. If you have a pool stick, um, if you have any pool sticks that the leather has fallen off the tips, um, the ferrule can, the white part of the pool stick is the ferrule, it will cut the claw if you try to use it. When I mix it, I apply it and then scrape off the excess so it doesn't dry. On the holes that we do cover in the center, we're going to leave a little bubble that way when it does dry, we can scrape it off and get it flush. You'd rather have too much than not enough. If it's not enough, you have to rework a whole nother bit of putty. And then for as far as the uh, Brazilian slate, I'll show you since I have a little extra putty. If you feel that the ball is going to roll on the surface of that hole, just come over here and give it half a, half a fill on this side only. Um, a good way to check is just grab an end rail and put it on and see if the ball is going to roll on the surface of it. And rail being the shorter rail of the bunch. Uh, the cat in cat rails, not the side rails because we did one long side rail. And I'll show you that one. And that takes about five minutes to dry. You'll notice right here it'll start drying pretty quickly. I scrape my excess right here just in case I need to use it later. Uh, but one most time once that dries, it just pops right off. These are the long rails I'm talking about. These are the side rails that we'll end up just putting along this side. And then this is the end rail that we'll put on the end. Nice thing about Olhausen is that once you have the side rails on, you still have access right here to put an additional screw to connect this one and this one together if you wanted to. You could connect this pocket with this one. So it, with that said, you can essentially have all the screws in the rails so the pockets will never get loose. Um, what we end up doing is we, if we see a gap or something on one of the pockets or something, we'll put that extra screw. But most of the time we just do two straight rails, two end caps, call it a day. And once that dries, it'll take about five minutes, like I said. Uh, we'll scrape it all off and get everything nice and clean. Now we've already gotten all of our pads right here glued on. Uh, we got all of our rails done. Um, the table's nice and level. We've routed everything. So now it's just kind of a waiting in the game. Um, this is about the time I would put the pockets on if I was working by myself. But that's pretty much it. Uh, we're making good time. We're at... Um, an hour and uh, 40 minutes. So usually it takes about an hour and a half to assemble the table upstairs, but we, uh, as well as uh, we uh, added a refill with this whole thing. So we were able to get it from the garage into here and refill the rails. And now we just have to put the cloth on as we scratch the putty off. So hopefully this is Hopefully for the fire guard guy, the chocolate fire guard guy, hopefully this is as useful as a, at least a NASA aluminum spacecraft, you know, um, at this point, so.
you should be a rocket scientist if uh, you're watching this live stream and you haven't already worked on your pool table. Sir. Airplane propeller to deal with. I'll dry it up real quick. Fully done shortly. Oh, is that 10%? Take it off very lightly. I'm not putting any real pressure. Just letting the scraper do its job. And just a few passes without gouging into it. if there are, is any little burrs or anything to do that. But what she's going to do is she's going to sweep around one more time and then I'm going to come back around and do a hand sweep make sure there's no trash underneath on top. Because the cloth is going directly on top of this and we're going to be stapling the cloth into it with half inch staples, quarter inch staples. Okay, since we wash our hands now, we can rock and roll and put some cloth on. Now again, the cloth is going to have a definite top and bottom. Here you go. You dry your hands? Yeah. Okay. She didn't dry, dry. She didn't dry. 
she, yeah. <laughs> she lies. She's like, yeah. And, uh, yes. Dripping, her hands are dripping. She, she drives. Okay, so it definitely has a face. There's a sticker right here. If for some reason it's missing a sticker, you're gonna have dotted lines on one side. On one of the edges, the edge that has the seam line will have dotted lines. So you know that that's the face. On the other side, there are no lines. Dotted lines, no lines. But we have a sticker that tells me that that is the top, okay? Now, again, to the untrained eye, they'll never know the difference. We do a sweep to take all the old spirits off, and then we drop it down to the side. Here, get Lydia in that one also. <laughs> and we do the flying eagle. <gasps> okay? And then what I do is uh, we pull tight, and I only drip it over an inch off of the side that I'm looking at. So I look, I look towards the, uh, I look towards the side with the seam because the one of the lines, and I only want to go an inch off this way because that is where our anchor side, and then we're gonna pull end up pulling on this side to get the stretch. You grab your roll staples and a razor blade. Every time I start stapling, Lydia grabs me a roll of staples and a razor blade. Anchor down that end first, and then come over here and pull the crown out. When I say anchor it down, I do. One in the middle, and then two X's on either side, and then just take it off over here. Pull this way, and then staple it down. Pull this way, staple it down, and then go, for, go from there, okay? Will you record me as I staple? And it has to stay up, uh, up and down like that. If you go sideways or anything, it turns off. So then you come onto this end, and you'll see that there's a hole right here that means that that's the center. And of course, this is only draping over an inch, so we're really not going to change that. We're just going to pull it straight towards us. And this cloth has a lot of pulls, so you see I got five inches on that. See my X in the center, and then grab right here, pull tight, and slide it down. Now, we're stapling into that liner, so the liner, you only have a half inch uh, um, room for error. Do that. Um, we'll grab right here and pull and tack it down. And then we're going to go to the side with the seam, and that's the dotted line. And we're going to grab, come towards us a little. But what we want here is we want to pull to the right a little bit to create a dip. Here, we're gonna pull to the right, to the left a little bit, the, towards the center of the pocket, create that little dip. Now you don't want it to be too much, because then you'll have bubbles all right here. Upgraded material, you're gonna not want to pull too much like that. But here, I'm gonna pull towards me, uh, to the right, and then I'm gonna attack all this down. And then over here, since this is already anchored down, I'm gonna pull this, and notice this isn't going down at all because we don't want to pull that cloth towards us. We just want it flush with the liner. That's just an extra wedge from earlier. Okay, and then once you anchor that whole side down, we got end to end anchored. We have the side anchored down. We have the pocket made already. We're going to grab it over here. And it's a Pro 8 table, so this is an 8 foot cloth. So it just barely makes it, but we know that an eight foot works on a pro eight with a champion cloth, so we're, that's why we use it. And you don't have to go buy a nine foot cloth for any reason, just put some stretch into it. So pull towards me, and over to the left, uh, to the right a little bit, and again this one, pull towards me and over to the left a little bit. And don't worry about any of this, because that doesn't matter, because we're, we're getting some stretch out of it anyways. So again, I don't, I don't have it stretched over here, but I'm gonna grab it and we'll pull towards me and a little bit towards the right. And just barely get it, okay? 
and then come here right in the middle and grab and just pull the crap out of it and anchor that down. Okay. Most of the time on an eight foot table, you'll have a lot more to grab, but definitely you want it tight at the end of the day. Um, so when you're applying it, do stretch it, uh, even if you have enough. One more. And this is a lot harder than uh, it looks. So you can get up upholstery uh, clamps and, and clamp, clamp it and pull it, but for the most part, you just have to go with the flow with this one. Um, when you have more material, you have a little more to grab onto. Okay, and the reason why Lydia gave me a, a blade to work with is because we're going to be uh, cutting uh, the pockets right now. Can you grab your And with the pockets, we go. We're gonna go straight down the middle with the frame of the corner okay so as long as you get it and you don't you don't have to cut any higher than the the lip of the bottom of the um the liner but you do want to cut four fingers on these because what we're going to do is pull this one down and tack it and then we're going to pull the outside one down and tack it and then we'll pull the two middle and tack them down now you don't want to put too many staples under here because then you're going to end up seeing a lot of staples. The balls are going to end up hitting staples and cutting and everything. This right here is really clean. You don't see any. We're going to cut any excess cloth off the bottom so that we don't see it underneath the pockets. And then right here, there's two little flaps. They're not going to do anything, but for good measure, we always tack them down. Come over to the side pocket. Side pocket's gonna be a little harder. You're gonna want six fingers on this one. So again, straight down the middle. And then what I do is one, two. One, two. And all the while I'm going, trying to go to the point, all to one point, all the same little point down here. That way you have all triangles. And when we get these, uh, these strips, the reason why we put these strips on is so that we don't see the liner underneath. So when you apply the strips, make sure that they're, they, if they're not, if they're too thin, that you're at least favoring the bottom. That way you don't see the liner when you staple these uh, flaps on. So again, staple, staple, all the way. And then the two flaps for good measure. And then here, you don't want to cut these flaps all the way to the top because then you won't have anything to put pull if you have to redo the table or move it or uh, take the cloth off for some reason and put it back on. You want to make sure that you have those fingers to grab from and not leave yourself high and dry. Okay, back to another corner. This is all the excess cloth that you can end up giving the customer as a breaking pad. The breaking pad is to where you put the cue ball on here and on the break you don't do wear and tear on your cloth. I'll show you that later. Again, we're going to start at the middle of this right here. And then we're going to tack them down. Black is always a little more brittle than all the other material. So it kind of ripped a little bit. but. As long as you don't see any of the liner or anything, it looks really good, and that rib won't go anywhere. Again, the only way to cut this cloth is with a blade or with the ferrule on the pull stick uh, that doesn't have a leather tip. And the cloth always rips straight, so as long as you're ripping down and away from the actual cloth, it'll 
more than likely not to give you any trouble. And again, four staples. One, two, three, four, two to grow on, and then cut your fingers. So you're gonna do this six times, so be very careful. This one you just wanna be the most careful on is cutting these, because remember, you're going down the middle, and then you're doing, turning this one into three, turning this one into three. Sometimes you do have to cut it up pretty high just to get rid of the fold. But luckily, we got easy going material. Well, already. Reload, reload. It's like time crisis. Sometimes our house of the dead, you gotta reload. And the zombies never stop coming. Reload. Okay. That little pad had come to roll down a little bit, so I just kind of pushed it back up. That way it didn't look like an eyesore. Again, the pads are nice to have because the balls, sometimes they'll ricochet and hit the slate and end up cutting the cloth right up here at the top uh, over time if you got a hard hitter. And the last one, just for good measure, we'll show you this last one. Jump behind me. Again, straight down the middle. Turn those into four. One, two, three, four. Do the little side flat. This is a tensioner, not supposed to jump off. But also this little piece right here, if this is up and you're stapling, it will pinch your hand. So make sure this is clipped down in there if you're using SCS 5000. Of course, you can find the CS5000 on Amazon. After that, we're gonna cut 18 holes. These are the rail holes that hold the rails on the table. With that said, um, we're gonna do 18 of those all the way around. Lydia is gonna finish the other 17. No, I'll assist her. And you want these holes to be big enough to where you're not uh, getting any thread going up with the rail bolt. You want to make sure the holes are big enough so when the rail bolt goes through, it's not taking thread with it. Because that's when you start having problems. And once you get the rails on, if the hole isn't exposed, you have to take the rails back off. After that, we'll clean off the table, and we're going to put the hardware box on top of the table because we're going to start putting rails on. I like to clean the bottom of the hardware box on because I've got black cloth, so I like them on my leg a little bit. And any excess material, we'll just pick it up and throw it in the trash. Uh, here on the ground, we're going to have to do some sweeping, but I have a brush that we can, uh, we can use our trash box. Sometimes leaks, but luckily we tape that thing up with some big blue. Okay, and then after that, um, we're just going to put those rails on. Chintzy with your arms close together, they'll tend to sag and you can break the rails inside the 
the little eyelets where the pocket is that where the pocket is screwed into. There's a little flaps right here in the pocket. You just want to make sure those aren't tucked underneath the rail. Because what happens is you end up tightening them down. If you tighten it down tight enough, they could crack the, the slit in here. This thing has give, but not that much give. Sometimes the pocket flaps will get caught in between the rail and the, the cloth, so it'll still feel like it's sitting wonky, but it's just because the flap is in there. These were just getting started. We're not going to tighten these. Because if we tighten them, then we can't adjust them and make the need necessary adjustments. So we're just staging them on and just throw them in a few. Customer wants the name play it like this side over here, so he's breaking towards that way. The head reel is the part that you break from, and you rack on the other end. And Lydia will tell you that she tightened the pockets so she's blue in the face, but you can't trust it. <laughs> it's the screwdriver. It's the screwdriver. So just always check everyone's work, and it always looks good too when. You when you're double checking the work, because you know that if something did get overlooked, it, it probably got handled then. Even before we leave, we check everything, make sure we staple all the pockets and screw in all the rail bolts, because every now and then we get to talking to the customer and just totally forget to staple one pocket. Like yesterday, we were about to leave and one of the pockets was still detached by the staple. After that, we're going to grab a 9 sixteenths, or a half inch socket on a speed handle. And the reason why we use the speed handle is for what, Lydia? Speed. For speed, exactly. The speed handle is built for speed, so it should be used in such a manner. Um, and then before we tighten anything, we want to make sure everything's squared away. So what we're going to do is we're going to Stand on the side right here, make sure they're squared up, feels good. Make sure these side pockets actually look good. Pull that side, pull that whole rail towards you. Oh, not that much. That's what the difference. Yep, right there is good. That was having an issue putting this one on. Good, and then we we'll make sure that these feel good under here as well. So that feels good now. Now the way I have her do it is I have her tighten the two ends first closest to the corner pockets. So go ahead and do that on the first row. Alright, you don't have to do any pushing or anything on that, okay? Okay, do that. Your 
Kirsty. Baby Kirsty. And uh, this is the line I'm talking about right here, which still looks really straight. From here to the corner, way down there, you want to look down and make sure it looks right on the money. See that? And then also you can look at this line right here and see that it's really straight, okay? And we're out on the same, on the opposite side. And then, uh, see where we got. 